Philippine Grid Code 710 Generating Unit Capability Tests 7101 Test Requirements 71011 Tests shall be conducted in accordance with the agreed procedure and standards to confirm the compliance of generating units for the following a capability of generating units to operate within their registered generation parameters b capability of the generating units to meet the applicable requirements of the grid code c capability to deliver the ancillary service that the generator had agreed to provide and d availability of generating units in accordance with their capability declaration 71012 all tests shall be recorded and witnessed by the authorized representatives of the grid owner generator and or user 71013 the generator shall demonstrate to the grid owner the reliability and accuracy of the test instruments and equipment to be used in the test 71014 the grid owner may at any time issue instructions requiring tests to be carried out on any generating unit all tests shall be of sufficient duration and shall be conducted no more than twice a year except when there are reasonable grounds to justify the necessity for further tests. 71015. If a generating unit fails the test, the generator shall correct the deficiency within an agreed period to attain the relevant registered parameters for that generating unit. 71016. Once the generator achieves the registered parameters of its generating unit that previously failed the test, it shall immediately notify the grid owner. The grid owner shall then require the generator to conduct a retest in order to demonstrate that the appropriate parameter has already been restored to its registered value. 71017. If a dispute arises relating to the failure of a generating unit to pass a given test, the grid owner, the generator, and or user shall seek to resolve the dispute among themselves. 71018. If the dispute cannot be resolved, one of the parties may submit the issue to the GMC. 7102. Tests to be performed. 71021. The reactive power test shall demonstrate that the generating unit meets the registered reactive power capability requirements specified in Section 542. The generating unit shall pass the test if the measured values are within plus or minus 5% of the capability as registered with the grid owner. 71022. The primary response test shall demonstrate that the generating unit has the capability to provide primary response, as specified in Section 762. The generating unit shall pass the test if the measured response in megawatts hertz is within plus or minus 5% of the required level of response within 5 seconds. 71023. The fast start capability test shall demonstrate that the generating unit has the capability to automatically start up synchronize with the grid within 15 minutes and be loaded up to its offered capability, as specified in Section 548. The generating unit shall pass the test if it meets the fast start capability requirements. 71024. The black start test shall demonstrate that the generating plant with black start capability can implement a black start procedure, as specified in Section 773. To pass the test, the generating unit shall start on its own, synchronize with the grid and carry load without the need for external power supply. 71025. The declared data capability test shall demonstrate that the generating unit can be scheduled and dispatched in accordance with the declared data. To pass the test, the unit shall satisfy the ability to achieve the declared data. 71026. The dispatch accuracy test shall demonstrate that the generating unit meets the relevant generation scheduling and dispatch parameters. The generating unit shall pass the test if a. In the case of synchronization, the process is achieved within plus or minus 5 minutes of the registered synchronization time. b. In the case of synchronizing generation, if registered as a generation scheduling and dispatch parameters, the synchronizing generation achieved is within an error level equivalent to 2.5% of net declared capability. c. In the case of meeting ramp rates, the actual ramp rate is within plus or minus 10% of the registered ramp rate. d. In the case of meeting load reduction rates, the actual load reduction rate is within plus or minus 10% of the registered load reduction rate. And E. In the case of all other generation scheduling and dispatch parameters, values are within plus or minus 1.5% of the declared values. 71027. The ancillary service acceptability test shall determine the committed services in terms of parameter quantity or volume, timeliness, and other operational requirements. 
generators providing ancillary services shall conduct the test or define the committed service. However, monitoring by the grid owner of ancillary service performance in response to system-derived inputs shall also be carried out. 711. Site and Equipment Identification. 7111. Site and Equipment Identification Requirements. 71111. The grid owner shall develop and establish a standard system for site and equipment identification to be used in identifying any site or equipment in all electrical diagrams, connection point drawings, grid operations instructions, notices, and other documents. 71112. The identification for the site shall include a unique identifier for each substation and switch yard where a connection point is located. 71113. The identification for equipment shall be unique for each transformer, transmission line, transmission tower, or pole, bus, circuit breaker, disconnect switch, grounding switch, capacitor bank, reactor, lightning arrester, OCPD, and other HV and EHV equipment at the connection point. 7112. Site and Equipment Identification Label. 71121. The grid owner shall develop and establish a standard labeling system, which specifies the dimension, sizes of characters, and colors of labels, to identify the sites and equipment. 71122 The grid owner or the user shall be responsible for the provision and installation of a clear and unambiguous label showing the site and equipment identification at their respective system. Section 542 Generating Unit Power Output 5421 The generating unit shall be capable of continuously supplying its active power output, as specified in the generator's declared data, within the system frequency range of 59.7 to 60.3 Hz. Any decrease of power output occurring in the frequency range of 59.7 to 57.6 Hz shall not be more than the required proportionate value of the system frequency decay. 5422. The generating unit shall be capable of supplying its active power and reactive power outputs, as specified in the generator's declared data, within the voltage variations specified in section 523 during normal operating conditions. 5423. The generating unit shall be capable of supplying its active power output, as specified in the generator's declared data, within the limits of 0.85 power factor lagging and 0.90 power factor leading at the generating unit's terminals, in accordance with its reactive power capability curve. 5-4-2-3